In the 1580s, the Italian Jesuit Filippo Sassetti, uh, he noticed something exciting while interacting with the local people in Goa. Uh, he discovered that many words and terms used in European languages had an uncanny similarity with uh, Sanskrit and of course many other Indian languages. Like uh, first he figured out seven Italian was Sette and it's Sapta in uh, Sanskrit and all Hindi and other languages. Eight was Akto and in Sanskrit it was, uh, it, it is Ashta. Similarly, uh, you know, Dio and Deva for God and Serpent and Sarpa for Snake were also so similar that a connection between Sanskrit and European languages could not but be real. And that was the academic, uh, the beginning of the academic quest for uh, the mythical Indo-European peoples of the prehistoric past and of course the, you know, sacred mother language from which came almost all the other classical uh, Indo-European languages like Greek, Farsi, Persian, Latin, and of course, uh, the Sanskrit. Like towards the middle of 18th century when the first group of uh, Indophiles, I would call, or the Orientalists in India, who uh, figured out that India was much more than a terrain just to be mapped, surveyed, and exploited for natural resources, a fantastic person called William Jones founded the Asiatic Society in Calcutta modeled after the Royal Society in, in London and he told, I will just quote from uh, one of his lectures, the bounds of investigations which is in Royal Society Jones Road will be the geographical limits of Asia and within these limits its inquiries will be extended to whatever is performed by man or produced by nature. And then in a famous lecture in 1786, I, I will again quote it, he said Sanskrit language, whatever may be its antiquity, is a wonderful structure, is of a wonderful structure, more perfect than the Greek, more copious than the Latin, and more exquisitely refined than either, yet bearing to both of them a stronger affinity than could possibly have been produced by accident. That was exactly what the Italian, uh, Italian GSV had observed uh, 200 years back. And thus was born the science of linguistics, comparative linguistics, historical linguistics, and linguistic paleontology over the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the advent of computer and artificial intelligence, right, the uh, understanding the evolution of languages and especially the, you know, the evolution of phonetics because language has mainly two things. Uh, one is the sound uh, and another is the structure. And of course, I mean, I am oversimplifying the thing, but um, like basically sound and structure, that's how a language differentiates, like uh, how Sanskrit become Bangla, my, I mean, my mother tongue and Hindi and Pali and, and Maithili and Odia or, or even Punjabi or uh, Marathi. It's, it's basically the sound changed. The structure almost remains same, some, some differences, right? But the study of the evolution of sound, uh, which plays a very big role in figuring out how the languages have evolved and which is the, which is the previous language and which is the Minital language. Like now we know that Bangla came from Sanskrit. So if somebody says that Sanskrit came from Bangla, it would be, you know, I mean, ridiculous, right? But then, I mean, we know because we have a lot of historical records for that. But if you go three, four thousand years back, it was not possible, right? Because the records are not there. 